Hey everyone and welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this course, we are going to learn React Routes. You are going to learn all the new concepts of React Routes and after this course, you will be able to make your own React project with React Routes. So let me just show you what you are going to learn in this course. You are going to learn all the new concepts of React Router. Just like nested routes, no match routes, URL parameters, index routes, active links, search parameters and at the end, we are going to make auth project to understand React Route in the real world examples. So we're going to make a simple project and use React Router inside it. This course is for beginners. So you're going to start really from the scratch and learn all the concept in details. So let's dive in and see what is React Router. React Router is a full featured client and server side routing library for React. React Router used to navigate between pages. React Router keeps your UI in sync with the URL. To work with React Router, you need to first install React Router DOM in the React application. So, let me first open the documentation of React Router. To work with React Router, you have to open the reactrouter.com and here is the quick start of the React Router library. To install the React Router, you have to say npm install React Router DOM. Now, let me just install this router in my React project. So, we're going to first create the React project. So, I'm going to execute a command called npx create react app and then specify name to it i'm going to specify name to this app react router app or you can specify any name to this application that's about you so this command is going to create the react application inside this project directory you can see now once you have your react application you can just enter into your project directory and then execute a command called npm start this is going to start the development server so I'm going to say here cd react router app and then press enter. This is going to enter into the project directory. Just for that, let me install the Telvin CSS inside this project. Telvin CSS allows us to style the React application. So I'm going to search for Telvin CSS and click on the telvincss.com. Click on get started and then click on this framework guide. Here I'm going to search for create react app and then you have to first create the react application. We already have that. So let's move to the next step where we are going to install the Telvin CSS. So we need to install all these three libraries in the project. So here I'm going to say npm install hyphen d Telvin CSS, OCSS and auto prefixer. So I'm going to install all these three libraries in the React project. So once we have that libraries, you have to execute a command npx Telvin CSS in it hyphen p. Let me clear the screen and execute this command. This command is going to create two files inside your project. You don't have to worry about these files. This is just for configuring Telvin CSS in the React application. Just for that, inside your Telvin config.js, you have to add this statement. So just copy this statement and open the Telvin config.js and specify that right here inside this content. Something like this. Save this file, close the Telvin config.js, back to the documentation. Just for that, you have to copy all these three directives and paste that inside index.css. So back to your project, open the source. And here you are going to have the index.css file. Just clear all this CSS and paste your Telvin directives. Just after that, you can start your React project. But before that, let me just grab this h1 heading tab back to the app.js, get rid of all this right from here, and then specify this h1 heading tag here. Something like this. Now, this h1 heading tag have the Telvin CSS classes. Let me save this file. Back to the index.css, save this, open the terminal, clear the screen, and I'm going to say here npm start to start the development server. So, this is going to start the React application on the local host 3000. Just after that, I want to change the font family of the application. So, I'm going to back to the index.css, and at the top, here I'm going to import the font family called Poppins from the Google Font website. And then, just after this, and right down here, I'm going to say star select all the elements and then specify font family poppins and the callback font family is sans serif save this file this is going to change the font family of this application now let me close this Telvin CSS documentation and then back to my project here i'm going to get rid of all the unnecessary files from this source folder what i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of this app test.js right from here get rid of this logo svg get rid of this setup test and this report web vital get rid of both these files from this project we are not working on it 
let me just back to the index.js you have to get rid of this web vital function right from here get rid of this import statement and inside this app.js you have this local svg get rid of it we are not using it save this file save this index file as well and now if you back to your react project you will have the result something like this now this is the starter project if you want to start right from here you can just download this project from the link provided in the description so you have to just enter into the master branch and download this project now just after that we have to install this react router dome in this project so i'm going to open the terminal open a new terminal enter into the project directory react router app and here i'm going to say npm install and then i'm going to specify the name of the library which is react router dome so i'm going to specify that here at the time of recording this video the current version of this react router dome is version 6 so i'm going to press enter and install this latest version inside this react application once we have this if you open the package.json file you can notice inside the dependencies you will have here react router dom let me close this terminal back to the index.js and now let me show you how you can connect this react router dom to this react application so very first we need to connect the react router dom to the react application so we can sync the ui with the url so at the top here just out of this app, I'm going to import browser router from React Router DOM. We're going to use this component as a wrapper to this application because it stores the current location in the browser address bar using the clean URLs and navigates using the browser built in history stack. So, using this browser router, we're going to store all the information of the URL in the browser history. So I'm going to copy this get rid of this react strict mode and specify the browser router here if you want you can specify this browser router inside this strict mode as well but i'm going to get rid of this react router strict mode and then specify this browser router as a wrapper to this app component now let me save the changes back to the app.js if you're back to the app nothing changes but now we are ready to start messing with the urls so let me first make the navigation so i'm going to toggle this window on the right side and I'm gonna put my application on the left side. Now inside this app component, let me get rid of this H1 heading tag and create the navigation menu. To make the navigation menu, let me get rid of this app right from here. And then I'm gonna call the Tailwind CSS classes here. First is container and MX auto. So this class is used to center the content. Just after that, here I'm gonna add nav element and then specify some classes here of Tailwind. So BG gray 100. And then inside this nav, right here i'm going to add an anchor tag to this anchor tag i'm going to specify href attribute which is invoice and then the text is going to be in the spawn tag so i'm going to add here a spawn tag and then here i'm going to say invoice duplicate this statement and instead of invoice here i'm going to say expenses let me do the same for this path so in the href attribute i'm going to say expense let me save the changes so here we have the navigation menu let me add some space between this anchor tags so what if i specify here flex so if i specify here flex flex column gap 4 this will add some space between these navigation items now let me show you what would happen when i click on these invoices when i click on it it will reload the browser and navigate us to this invoice url when i click on these expenses it will reload the browser again and redirect us to this expenses url this is not the single page application does. So instead of using this anchor tag, I'm using the React Router DOM link component. So at the top, here I'm going to say import in the object, I'm going to say link from React Router DOM. I'm going to replace this anchor tag with this link component, something like this. Let me save the changes. This is going to return an error message. So if you open your console, then you will have here an error message this is because this href attribute is not the property of this link component instead of this href we specify here two two is just like the href attribute we are passing the address to the anchor tag using this two property let me save the changes and now you can see we have these invoices and the expenses now when i back to the home page and click on this invoices it will redirect you to the new invoices url and when i click on these expenses you can see you're on the expenses url but without reloading the browser you don't have any routes that render when the url changes yet 
right now you don't have any routes that render when the URL changes yet. But link is changing the URL without causing a full page reload. Now what I want, I want to render the component as well with this URL. So for the invoices URL, I want to render the component invoices. And for the expenses URL, I want to render the component expenses. So let's create both these components right inside this source folder. I'm going to create a new folder here and name this folder component. And inside this, I'm going to create two files. For the first file, I'm going to specify name invoice.js. And for the second file, I'm going to specify name expense expenses.js. Inside this invoice.js right here, I'm going to simply say export default function. The function name is invoices. And then I'm going to simply return a division tag with some Kelvin classes. So I'm simply going to say here text center. And inside this div, here I'm going to say h2, h1, and then specify here invoices. Let me copy this, save this file back to the expenses, and specify the same component here. But instead of invoices, right now I'm going to say here expenses. Let me just change the text as well, expenses. And now what I have to do is I have to link this URL with these components. To do that, we are using routes and route component. So let me just close both this component and back to the index.js. Right here, inside this browser router, I'm going to add two more components. First is routes. And second is route. Now using this React router DOM, we can import two more components, routes and route. Inside this browser router, we are going to use both these components so let me get it out this app component here i'm going to call routes and inside this we have route in the react router dom routes and route are the primary ways to render something in the react application routes and route are the primary ways to render something in the react router based on the current location you can think about this route kind of like a switch case statement routes is equal to switch and route is equal to cases. Route is equal to switch and route is equal to cases. Just like in switch case, there are different cases. Whenever there is a match in the case, switch case is going to execute that case. The same goes with this route. Whenever the location changes, route is going to look through all its children, means look through all these routes and find the best match and render that branch of UI route elements may be nested we'll look at that later i hope you understand the difference between routes and route now inside this route we can pass different properties so here we can pass path of the url so for the app component i'm going to pass the root url something like this and then inside this i'm going to specify element equal to sign and in this curly braces i'm going to call my app component so i'm going to just self close my app component you can just self close this route as well something like this i'm going to get it off this closing route let me duplicate this two more times for the second route i'm going to specify invoice and this is for the invoice component so we have this invoice component inside the components folder and inside that we have this invoice component so let me just grab that so at the top here we need to say import invoice from in the single code specify dot forward slash specify components and inside that we have invoice let me duplicate this and call the expenses get it out these invoices and here we say expenses so we are going to call both these components inside this index.js file and let me just copy these invoices and instead of this app we specify this component copy these expenses and specify that right here and change this path to expenses save the changes and now when you back to the root route, it's going to return the app component. When you click on the invoices, it's going to return the invoices component. And when you click on the expenses, it's going to render the expenses component. React Router DOM is going to render all these components without reloading the browser. You can create these components anywhere in the source folder. That's upon you. And you can link that component to the path. Next, we'll understand nested routes.